right. So today's presenter is Sherbin Razulzadeh. Some of you might uh, know him from training and, and support. Um, but before the webinar starts, let's start with some uh, guidelines. So um, we do encourage as an interactive um, session questions. So on your right side, you should see a panel. And I'll be monit monitoring this throughout uh, the webinar. So feel free to jot down your questions um, either during a certain slide, uh, and then we can revisit it if we have time towards the end. Over to you, Sherbin. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, do you hear me, Jasmine? Just checking. Yes, I can hear you. Mm -hmm. Okay, good, 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 um, uh, good afternoon, uh, good morning, everybody joining this webinar. My name is Sherbin Rasulzadeh, Senior Geoscience Technical Advisor based in the Crowley and working for CGG Geo Software. So today I will talk about uh, this, um, our uh, uh, Improving your reservoir characterization using uh, RAC SI, Lito SI, and USI modules in Hamson Russell. So uh, my outline will be like this. So I will do some introduction. Then I will start with uh, RAC SI, RAC physics modeling, and then uh, Lito SI facies and uh, fluid probability estimation. And then I will go to GSI, which is just a scaling version. And we go. I'm talking about go beyond seismic detail. Starting with the uh, introduction. So within GeoSoftware, we have a different software. For example, starting from Hapson Russell for seismic reservoir characterization, JSON Workbench for advanced seismic reservoir characterization, PowerLock for petrophysical interpretation and analysis, Insight Air for advanced linear interpretation, Rock SI for advanced rock physics modeling, and uh, Bell Pro for velocity modeling, and Earth Model FT for uh, reservoir modeling. Uh, and uh, you can just uh, transfer your uh, reservoir characterization results to reservoir engineering uh, grids using this air LFT. Today I will talk about uh, RACSI, which is advanced rock physics uh, module in Hamson Russell and also outside Hamson Russell. It could be uh, uh, standalone and using CGG Joe software platform. And two modules from uh, Hamson Russell, Lito SI and GeoSI. We have many other uh, modules in Hamson Russell, but today I'm talking about Lito SI and GeoSI. So before that, there are some, you know, let's uh, put some context that, yeah, in the industry, we have some challenges. So how, what are those challenges that we want to understand the play? Integrate rock physics with the geology and the geophysics. We want to create reliable models to make confident development decisions like imaging thin methods, especially, and we want to discriminate facies and fluids and also understand the flow. We want to deliver this information as a seismic reservoir characterization results to the engineer, and also we want to estimate uncertainty. So these are the challenges we want to tackle those. Looking back uh, to the deterministic seismic reserve characterization, there is a general workflow for that. So we have uh, some uh, seismic stacks or seismic gathers or post-stack seismic data as well. And you have well log data and interpreted horizons. You do well to seismic tie, estimate wavelets, and get the better well to si uh, tie the logs. And using those logs, you create your low frequency model or initial model for the case of that you are using GeoV strata, and, uh, which is a model-based uh, inversion. And you put it inside uh, this uh, deterministic inversion tool, could be model-based inversion or trace-based inversion. And you get these uh, elastic parameters, which could be pin impedance, shear impedance, density, or some uh, variation like pin impedance, BPVS. Now we want to... Uh, interpret these, we use uh, simply cross plot of the well logs and apply the polygon on that and apply this polygon on their volumes using some of the uh, limitations of the, for example, time gates, and then we extract our uh, reservoir. So this is a general tool for the deterministic inversion, but how we can uh, enhance this, for example, using rock physics modeling, using rock SI, and for using a Lito SI for interpretation. So using a rock physics modeling, we can condition our well logs and we get better well logs. We can, uh, you know, just uh, remove the, uh, for example, the uh, washout zones, uh, invasion zone, and create missing logs. So, and we can create very uh, good uh, and uh, condition well logs to be input to this process. And for the Lito SI, we want to interpret these uh, inversion results. So rather than just doing some cross plot analysis, we can do some uh, Bayesian classification analysis and we can get probability volumes per facies or most probable volume out of those inverted results. But with deterministic inversion, so suppose we have a, 
uh, this uh, wedge model. So this is a first, uh, suppose this is a sand model inside the background shade. And uh, if you create synthetic size because of that, you will be seeing that, uh, the, that there are some uh, troughs and peaks and uh, at the edges of the, at the interfaces of the, uh, this wedge and also inside that wedge, which is in this uh, uh, area. So these, these are not real ones. We can interpret top and base in, up to some extent and uh, in, uh, up to some extent, we are able to uh, get the interpretation correctly and we can estimate the thickness correctly. But beyond that, uh, that the thickness, we are not able to estimate this uh, thickness of that uh, real uh, wedge model. So we are not able to get this part. Using this inversion, deterministic inversion, yes, we are able to uh, get up to some extent and uh, interpret that. Uh, uh, wedge model, and also we can get this uh, uh, layer properties, which is a color, which is shown in color here, and these figures are the seismic data. And as you can see, we are able to interpret up to here. Let me see, uh, up to here, and beyond that, we are not able to interpret that. So this is a very thick, thin zones. So deterministic inversion is not able to, you know, uh, resolve that part. Another view. So for example, if I have this model in black, is there, and I have done inversion. Uh, we've got this uh, inversion results in uh, red. So the inversion results are matching to the uh, model in the thick areas, and we can say that the deterministic inversion is quantitative. But if you go to uh, far beyond that uh, tuning thickness or that uh, thickness that beyond the seismic resolution, it is not quantitative. So we need to find a way to be able to resolve these uh, thin layers. So uh, regarding this deterministic inversion, uh, we can estimate uh, one or more realistic, uh, uh, one or more elastic parameters, and uh, like density and uh, p impedance, s impedance. Then you can uh, use these uh, properties to define your reservoir geometry and map the reservoir quality. But the input to this, as I mentioned, the, the, this is well data. So if you just like garbage in garbage, yeah, so you'll, your well data needs to be conditioned. So it's very important step before proceeding to the inversion step, and uh, we need to do some iterative workflow between petrophysics and the rock physics modeling uh, and uh, create a condition and the uh, uh, nice uh, input logs to be used in a inversion, deterministic inversion to get good reliable results. We get good reliable results from the inversion, but with advances in the Bayesian inference, uh, you know, estimation and mathematics, we can do some quant uh, quantification of the uncertainty, which is uh, involved in this uh, interpretation of the facies and the fluids. So we use that uh, Bayesian classification, which is inside Lito SI, to interpret our inversion results. As I mentioned, the deterministic inversion provides one average model from possible reservoir uh, models and uh, so we cannot estimate uh, uncertainty associated with the properties. I am mentioning properties here because like uh, uh, acoustic impedance and the P impedance. So we cannot quantify that uncertainty. Plus we cannot uh, get the uh, thin reservoirs resolved using this uh, deterministic inversion. So we need to go further. So starting with uh, this uh, idea that we have some limitation deterministic inversion, I start with the rack side that I need to do conditioning of the well lags. So the values of the rock or rock physics is that uh, linking uh, petrophysical analysis and the seismic interpretations. And you can do corrections for the bad hole data and generate missing curves. And uh, we can use rock physics to support uh, statistical rock physics modeling. So you can generate some uh, uh, models and do some statistical analysis to generate some other data to be used in other interpretations. You can do, for example, using that statistical analysis and fluid substitution, you can do time-lapse feasibility studies. And you can determine rock elastic properties, which are required for, for example, for fluid substitutions, for pore pressure determination, fluid uh, coefficients, frac design, and bore for borehole integrity determinations. <clears throat> An example of the villa condition I'm going to show here. So uh, one of the typical uh, cross plots we use uh, for after inversion to dis discriminate between different facies and fluids is the uh, P-impedance VPVS uh, uh, cross plot. So this is a cross plot is shown here with color, uh, uh, color coded with the facies. These facies are shown here as S1, S2, S3, different sandstones and silty stone and cement. You see that the, the facies are mixed together in this uh, cloud of the data. 
But after data conditioning, you see that we are following that nice trends that we are expecting to see in a typical uh, uh, acoustic impedance VPVS cross plot for the classic uh, reservoir. For example, we have uh, uh, hydrocarbon field uh, data points coming out of that trend. This trend is shale or sandstone. It's quick getting highly cemented area. This is getting uh, less cemented and more shaly sandstone. Another example is shown here using the rock physics uh, data conditioning. So we have seismic data in the middle. We have the measured logs, uh, P impedance in uh, blue and the uh, PVS in the red. And this part is the condition with logs. And you see that this part has been corrected for some invasions. And the synthetic calculated from this uh, uh, corrected data, you see that it's matching to the seismic much better than the synthetic, which is used uh, only the measured data sets. So this will be this will help us to estimate better variolet and also do better with seismic type, which is very crucial for crucial for uh, seismic reserve characterization. Another example uh, that I mentioned we can use is for uh, time lapse study. So for example, we have P impedance S impedance cross plot here, and we have the synthesized well logs for gas, oil, and waters, and we know that if we our data should be in these areas for uh, water sand, oil sand, and gas sand. So what happens if the pressure changes? We can estimate it, the uh, data will go this side. And if oil replaces water, so data we expect would go to the water side, and uh, gas out of solution, and water injection, gas injection, and etc. So we can uh, analyze all of these effects using the rock physics model that we have already created. In the industry challenges about rock physics is that uh, we are going to uh, integrating uh, rock physics modeling with other reservoir characterization application. Sometimes it's very difficult, so you need to have a proper tool to be able to integrate this uh, with other tools like AVO study or interpretation. We need to create our own rock physics models or company-based rock physics model and also apply it in other places in the company, for example, and share it with our colleagues, that's another challenge. And uh, we want to understand time-lapse effects. I, I mentioned uh, in the previous slide. And we want to deal the missing or poor well locks. So use, uh, we need to use rock physics modeling for that. And uh, we want to model the phases that are not registered in the well lock. So your well locks in a crystal, of the, uh, uh, for example, the reservoirs, so you don't see that specific phases that could be in the flanks or other places. And you, you can, you want to uh, estimate that you can use rock physics modeling. And yes, it, again, it comes from the integrating rock physics with other applications. So we want to interpret seismic inversion results based on the rock physics uh, information that we, we got from the rock physics modeling and the well log measurements. So for this, we are introducing RACSI, which is advanced uh, rock physics uh, modeling tool. And it is uh, why we use this, because the rock physics is no longer just a domain for the petrophysicist. So we're using this uh, uh, tool. You are able to apply it on uh, interpretation, on inversion, or you can just create your own uh, uh, logs uh, using the uh, uh, rock physics model that you have created. Yeah, it can be used in many stages of the workflow for log conditioning, 1D, 2D, 3D modeling through uh, to data simulation for machine learning. And RockSI brings uh, rock physics directly to the geophysicist hand and they, uh, they can use it uh, freely to apply these uh, ideas. Uh, RockSI is just uh, mentioning some uh, uh, notes about that, that it's about you have this classics and carbonates uh, library of the rock physics models. And uh, for example, for classics, you have granular models, which you see that the cementation can be also involved. And for the carbonates, we have this inclusion models. And you can create uh, and develop your own desired models. For example, as shown here that the Fabian Allo, this uh, uh, established this, uh, published this papers showing that we have for, uh, he created a rock physics model for different rock types. For example, we have less cemented sandstone, a little bit cemented and completely cemented uh, sandstone. So, so he was able to create these uh, models and you see that his, his data sets are relying on those uh, rock physics model created for that cemented uh, sandstones. So you can create your own uh, sandstone based on the available 
library and also you can create your own uh, rock physics model using the equations in the library. You can do Monte Carlo simulations. Uh, you have your own rock physics model. You can do rock, uh, Monte Carlo simulation and you can investigate fluid and rock property scenarios using that Monte Carlo simulation as well or, or, or without that. So example shown here, for example, impedance, yes, impedance again. So you're doing some uh, simulations. You are able to see, for example, what will happen if the water flooding are uh, applied on the uh, well data or the gas comes out of the solution on the data. There is a good uh, links between the AVO modeling and Hampson Russell and the geostatical immersion. And also you can uh, apply to this uh, rock physics uh, from rock SI to interpretation. And also it will be coming, which is Python scripting. So you will uh, be able to Python script uh, your rock physics model and uh, run your rock physics in, based on the Python. For using this uh, rock physics or rock SI interpretation, you can, for example, shown here, we have rock, uh, uh, rock SI template shown on that, uh, this cross plot, which is EPVS and acoustic impedance cross plot. Uh, and we have this well data shown there. And this template of the uh, unconsolidated gas sand standard stone model with these parameters have been uh, plotted on this uh, cross plot. You see that we are we want to see the variation of the V shale and the porosity variations to see what happens to the data. And we can apply this at, at different uh, you know uh, variables like porosity, water saturation, different uh, input parameters. We can vary this uh, template and uh, you know just uh, plot template on the cross plot. But for this case, we are using the V-shale and porosity, which is shown here, V-shale and porosity variations. So we can apply this uh, on the cross plot and we can extract uh, these uh, points on the inverted results and it will show that color coded uh, cross plot, which is shown here as color coding here. It will be shown also on the section view, which is shown here. You have these two uh, uh, pairs of the data for each color. So it is one way to use uh, rock physics or rock SI for interpretation of the inversion results. Apart from that, uh, we can create our uh, rock physics model, so it will be deterministic. So uh, we have these uh, input parameters, different uh, input parameters, and it will give us uh, one value, uh, which is, uh, for example, BP for that specific, uh, uh, with this specific uh, rock physics uh, uh, model, and for those one input from each of these parameters. That's fine, it will give us one value, but we want to investigate possible ranges of the reservoir. So what we can do, we can assign uh, this uh, possible distribution for each of the attributes or the input parameters, and we can run uh, uh, Monte Carlo simulation and uh, just create uh, the different uh, realizations each time by random number generation, which is Monte Carlo simulation. So doing that, we are able to uh, generate uh, different output types, output values, and uh, with these different output values, we are able to capture the uh, possible ranges of the reservoir property, for example, for VP. So this will help us to uh, generate more data sets, for example, for interpretation, which is shown here. The left-hand side is a cross plot for the coming from the well data only. And the right-hand side is the simulated data based on the rock physics model generated based on the available well lock data and calibrated to the well lock data and then uh, used for uh, simulating the data. So this data set, you see much more uh, broader ranges. If I just put the, that uh, ranges of this uh, cross plot here, you see that that cross plot is only at this area, but uh, we are able to generate uh, more uh, ranges of the possible reservoir properties. So this can be used for interpretation later on. I will explain it in the lead to SI part. So going to lead to SI, so we want to interpret our inversion results. Uh, so we, I want to calculate phases and fluid and their probability volumes. Yes, pre-stack inversion results needs to be interpreted. Why? Because uh, elastic properties like acoustic impedance, shear impedance, VPVS, and et cetera, are not clearly understood by the non-geophysicists, especially if you go uh, talk to reserve engineers, they say, okay, what is this, what is that? Lithology phases distribution at reservoir is required, and uh, that is what can be easily be shared and understood by geologists, by reserve engineers, by geophysicists as well. And we want to estimate probability for each phase. So this is why we want to interpret uh, our inversion results using d 2 how we can estimate the lithology, for example, we can apply the same uh, cross plot analysis, simple one, and uh, extract uh, 
capture the data from the cross plot. Or we can use machine learning approach using eMERGE. This is not the discussion here. And finally, we can use this little SI, which is for facies and fluid classification, which is I'm going to discuss this here. So we have done uh, inversion, uh, seismic reserve characterization up to some extent. We have got uh, acoustic impedance and shear impedance, for example, or VPVS for this case, volume. And I want to estimate uh, or capture the sweet part and the sweet spots. One option is to create a cross plot of impedance and uh, VPVS and capture this uh, anomalous area on the well lux, this is well lux, and apply this idea to the inversion results and get this volume. So you see that I am able to capture that uh, sweet spot from the inversion results. The problem is that uh, if I change that uh, size of that um, cross, uh, that zone, you see that the uh, captured area is changing dramatically. And the other thing is that I am saying here uh, that uh, you see that dense ha dense, I have dense point here, so the probability of having gas sand at this point is more than ha having gas sand at the other places. So this should be uh, you know, formulated into this, uh, this idea should be formulated into this um, interpretation. So to formulate it, we use Bayesian um, classification or Bayesian inference method. Same thing is done. So we convert this uh, idea that data in the center should be have more probability than the outside. So it converts to the 2D two-dimensional probability density functions. And this probability density function is uh, fitted for each of these uh, uh, points of the each facies and we use Bayesian classification or inference method and to calculate probability of having, uh, for example, for each specific uh, facies. The workflow is like this. So we have inversion results, we have red logs, we create a cross plot, fit PDFs for each class and use these uh, PDFs and also the inversion results in the Bayesian inference. We can also have to have prior information for each uh, class and we can calculate probability for having each of these um, classes based on the available uh, elastic properties. And we can get a uh, probability volume for each of these classes and also the most probable volume. For example, at this point, probability of oil is higher than that. So that, it's that specific point of that uh, volume should be oil uh, sand in this uh, most probable facies. That's uh, good idea to interpret uh, in, in terms of the probability and uh, this is good because uh, we can get uh, inversion results into the geology uh, like little facies and also we can also have uh, their associated uh, probability which is good and uh, especially for drilling uh, uh, location finding. Example shown here, so this is broadband seismic data. Uh, we have the different angle stacks with uh, simultaneous inversion converted to acoustic impedance and VPVS. And then finally, uh, using a uh, little SI and Bayesian classification, we are able to find the gas sand probability, which is shown in the high red colors, higher probability, and the gas sand uh, little facies, which is shown in these uh, logs. And you see that the, our captured body is matching it to the, to the wells pretty well. So this can be used for um, you know, well planning and the reservoir uh, planning. Another example, which is in the unconventional reservoir. And uh, here, the most probable lithotype has been ca calculated from the uh, uh, simultaneous inversion. And this uh, fourth uh, lithofacies is the important lithofacies with low table, uh, total organic content and the high porosity, which is frackable. So they are able to, uh, find first most probability type and also the probability for the petrophages number four, which is the important for them. This is coming from the paper in 2013. Right, but we can use rock SI or rock physics for little SI. So in order to describe a facies probability distribution using well data, we need to train on all lithologies in the area. So some lithologies may be under sampled particularly in areas with limited field control, especially in the flanks, if we're talking about the uh, anticlines. And rock physics modeling can be used uh, to simulate uh, training data to ensure all anticipated geologies are presented in the training data. So then D2SI can train on the simulated data only or combination of the well logs and the simulated data. 
So how this can be done? So if you remember that we didn't have this rock SI, now we can have rock SI and create our rock physics model and do the simulation and enhance our uh, PDFs. And then this enhanced PDFs will help us to get, get better results from the uh, Bayesian inference or from lit SI. Example shown here, we have in the left-hand side well log data only. And in the right-hand side, we have well log and simulated data. Simulated data, we have simulated 100 times and uh, we are showing comparing these together. You see that in the right hand side we have, for example, this um, specifically this part which is cold was not uh, that much visible there, so we have it now here uh, better uh, displayed. And also calcite is uh, very scattered here, but now we have it better uh, uh, displayed here and we can fit better PDFs to that. You can also upscale. Upscale is required because we are talking about the seismic scale, so which is a seismic sampling. This is a deterministic inversion at the moment, so it will be, for example, two milliseconds, four milliseconds. So with upscaling, we will lose more data in the Villac data, as you see here. But with the simulated data, you see that we have still uh, some good amount of data to use uh, for PDF uh, estimation. So fitting PDFs to the left-hand side and right-hand side, right-hand side giving us better uh, contain the PDFs than the left-hand side, which is a uh, wild and uh, it goes everywhere, especially for the cold one. So for sure, doing an investigation and also converting this inversion results to lithophasis, you see that the top one is using only upscale logs and the bottom one is using both of them, upscale logs and also the simulated uh, data set. So this will give us much better uh, results compared to the top one. We can also do investigation. We can capture the bodies, for example, connected uh, cells using the, some condition. For example, uh, we can say that uh, perform connectivity analysis on the predictive facies volume, and we can use probability volumes uh, for conditioning. So we are here we are showing that uh, there are 10 largest oil sands with the probability of 80%, more than 80%. And uh, at this case, we are only using the upscale well logs. So if you are compared with the next one, which is using uh, upscale and simulated data, you see that our bodies are getting bigger, but maybe that uh, cutoff 80% is less. So we increase the 80% to 95%. So the cutoff uh, of the probability of the more than 95% that yes, the body is there. So it's showing it's different bodies. And what about uh, that uh, bodies are connected to the well, so it will show this, uh, it's connected uh, to the well, and also uh, with more than 95% of the probability. So this will help us to get better and improved results after the literal SI, this rock physics uh, simulated uh, data sets. So we are keeping, uh, you know, enhancing our reservoir characterization using rock physics and using literal SI to interpret the data. But we need to go beyond seismic details. So why is that? Uh, we want to integrate well and seismic data. We want to generate highly detailed model. We want to estimate high detail facies models. We want to estimate uncertainty as well from multiple realization. Uncertainty for the properties, not just for the little facies that uh, estimated in the previous, uh, in the little SI uh, based on the probabilities. The value for this is that we can generate realistic reservoir models and we can select the best drilling locations, assess uncertainty, accurately estimate reserves. And we can provide the reservoir engineers with the different scenario models, for example, P10, P50, P90 models of the, for example, facies. If you remember this model, so we had this wedge model, we were able to uh, interpret that and uh, yeah, there is limitation in the seismic, then in the inversion as well, so there is limitation at that point. So beyond that, we are not able to capture the property. In another view, so I have this uh, model of the uh, input model, this is the synthetic size we calculate for that, and the inversion results for that uh, synthetic size. So you see that this uh, thick layer above tuning, we are I'm able to get, you know, just uh, get the uh, correct value for that layer. For the tuning as well, because I'm using inversion, I'm going, going, I'm going to get the proper value, but beyond the uh, below tuning, I'm not able to get the uh, correct value for that property. So I need to do something else. I need to go behind, uh, beyond that uh, seismic resolution and the deterministic inversion resolution. So I need to go for GSI or geostatical or stochastic inversion. 
So GSI, which is Stochastic Inversion Partner, or Geostatical Inversion Partner of the Strata. Strata is our inversion software in uh, Hamson Russell. It is inside the uh, Hamson Russell and uh, integrated with the Hamson Russell product line. It was originally developed in the cooperation with Total and uh, then extended by CGG Veritas those days and now CGG. So it's keeping uh, uh, developing and it's not uh, stopped there. It complements the uh, strata with geostatical inversion. It's very easy to stop, uh, set up and fast. So you can run hundreds of realizations in very limited time. So you don't need to spend lots of time on it. Uh, you can get some idea of the possible uh, variation of, for example, the uh, variance of the, for example, for example, P impedance, S impedance. You can invert for P impedance and S impedance, and you can obtain phases uh, with the embedded little SI uh, Version SI module inside the uh, GSI. It supports time seismic angle stacks. It has also ranking tools. You, you have 100 realizations, so you don't need 100 realizations. Reservoir engineers, they don't need 100 realizations. You need to give them, for example, three volumes P10, P50, P90. So we have this ranking tool. So we can use that ranking tool to give those P10, P50, P90 volumes. You can transfer and, uh, these uh, properties into a corner point grid, uh, for example, using the segue. The workflow is like this. So you have the seismic data and you have some uh, you know, un uh, uncertainty for the seismic data. You have well locks uh, with, with well uncertainty and you have your stratigraphic grid. So you, you need to create uh, your model inside that stratigraphic, stratigraphic grid. You can start with initial model and define the thickness of that initial model and also some uncertainty assigned to those initial model. Yes, you need to have also the lateral and vertical uh, continuity measure, which is uh, variograms. And uh, we use this Gaussian uh, Bayesian property uh, inversion, which is uh, also uses a sequential Gaussian simulation sampling to create a possible reservoir simulation and sample that simula uh, possible simulation possible reservoir uh, solution using that uh, SGS and we create different reservoir models so we can generate uh, n realizations. So out of n realizations, we are able to get uh, uh, uncertainty of the properties, for example, uh, posterior mean, standard deviation of the acoustic impedance and shear impedance. Next step will be using these uh, uh, properties acoustic impedance and uh, elastic properties, as you can see, and use again little SI type of uh, module within inside the, within the GSI, then we can calculate N, uh, for example, little type volumes, for example, sand shale simulations. So out of those N uh, simulations, we can calculate sand probability cubes because uh, we have N times. So out of N, how many times you have sand at that specific point you can get uh, for example, sound probability at each specific point, which could be a volume as well at the end. And also you can have uh, this uh, P10, P50, P90 uh, calculated and uh, used for resume engineering. But uh, where does that detail come? So if you look at the left-hand side, which is seismic, uh, uh, one seismic event, trough, it could be coming from 30 feet sand within background shale or three 10 foot sand at the background shade, and also 50 foot sand and in the background shade. But this time you have this deterministic inversion will show something similar to the right hand side, which has doesn't have that much contrast with the background. So with uh, geostatical inversion, we say that no, those two are not good. So we are we think that the middle one is good. So but how? the vertical diagram of the elastic properties, like constraint size and thickness, and also the details of the initial stratigraphic model that we are using for inversion. It will also tell the inversion how the thickness of the inversion should be. Yes, this could be like uh, this model, the inversion is or like this model, or like this model, or different model. So there is uncertainty in defining the, uh, the location of these uh, thin layers. So we need to do multiple realization to be able to get some estimate of those uh, uh, possible locations. With deterministic inversion, uh, we are doing a uh, inversion. So we have the size, of, if you look at the size of the spectrum, it's a uh, span limited. With the deterministic inversion, we add this prior model and prior uh, missing low frequency part. We extend this uh, inversion results up to uh, some extent 
which is up to seismic, and we get these uh, details. With geostatical inversion, we are trending to enhance it, and how we, han we enhance it using the variable models, and we get these highly detailed uh, inversion results. This is, this is one of the realizations. But this is not uh, certain, so we need to do multiple realizations. So we do multiple realization, and out of those multiple realization, we get we can get uncertainty uh, quantified for that specific uh, property. And in other words, so I have the seismic volume in the top, and one realization in the left hand side, another realization at the right hand side. So you see that thick, thick uh, uh, layers they come uh, repeated at each uh, realization, but if you look at the thin ones, sometimes it is red, uh, yellow there, sometimes it is green there. So if you repeat these many times, you can see that uh, how many times uh, you have, uh, for example, red, how many times you have uh, yellow. So using that, you are able to quantify the uncertainty of imaging that thin layers. Example shown here. So we have a uh, uh, deterministic VPVS and deterministic and geostatical VPVS. This is our seismic data. This is uh, well, uh, well luck, which is uh, uh, water saturation. There are two layers here and the one thin layers in between. As you see, that deterministic inversion is not able to see these uh, two layers, but uh, geostatical inversion is trying to see that uh, two layers. You see that this strike is coming here and they are separated from each other. And looking at the deterministic inversion, this is a, a probability of the sand. And you see that it shows just one uh, thick layer is connected everywhere. But if you look at this, one of the realizations of the geostatical inversion, it shows that there is something in between those two layers. And if I do 200 realizations and get the um, average of those 200 realizations, it will show that, yes, this is these two layers are separated. And there are other things here and here. So it could be a target for the future development. So I am enhancing the, my understanding from the reservoir. Example shown here, we are, the, the study was trying to find the connectivity if there is a, the, the, there are, what are the volumes of the connected bodies to these wells. So this is one individual uh, lithology realization, different lithology realizations and if you look at just one of the realization of the sand and shale, it will show like this. And if you do multiple times and do some analysis on the connected uh, volumes, uh, connected sand volumes, you see that after many realizations, most of the realizations show that my sand volume is high. So it means that this uh, connected body is, uh, I mean, this, these two bodies are connected because I see bigger volumes, uh, more kind of, uh, more repeated than the smaller volume. So it means that these two bodies are connected. So they were able to find the connection between the two bodies. Right, so this is a workflow for uh, geostatical or stochastic inversion. So you do these uh, multiple realizations of the elastic properties, you put it inside the 2 side, and then you get this multiple realization of the two types, and after those, you can get the sand probability, and also re-rank them, you get P10, P50, P, P90 uh, volumes. But how to enhance it? So we can use RAKSI again, and we can uh, create a simulated uh, data, and with this simulated uh, data, we are able to get enhanced PDFs, we can input those enhanced PDF in GOSI's uh, uh, facial classification module, and uh, use those to get better uh, facies uh, classification and better cl uh, ranking of the volume and better probability estimation. All right, so as a conclusion, RACVSI is a RAC physics modeling tool flexible in creating user-defined RPMs or RAC physics models for any RAC type used for conditioning locks, generating missing locks, statistical simulation to study fluid replacement and, and improve literacy and GOSI studies. Lito SI is uh, enhancing the deterministic inversion results by converting them into lithology and their associated uh, probability volumes. And yes, GSI, you can integrate seismic and well in geology into highly detailed reservoir models, which is also matching uh, nicely to the wells. And we can estimate uncertainty of the uh, associated with properties and also associated with the lithotypes. You can use this uh, GSI to rank your different models and you, you can provide reservoir engineers with realistic reservoir models. Thank you very much for uh, coming. If you have any question, please send me an email.
and you can learn more. You, you just uh, we have a, a video, uh, YouTube channel for uh, other uh, webinars also uh, recorded there, and also we have a, in the Geo Software page of the CGG, so you can also access our webinars. And uh, for more information about our applications functionality, you can contact us for additional questions and comments using gs.solutions at cgg.com. Or you can, as I mentioned, you can go to CGG Geo Software, Software Support, and also cgg.com Geo Software, regional contacts. And uh, thank you very much for attending this webinar.